this episode, we're talking about one change you can make to increase your income significantly this year. I bet you're a bit like us, always looking for ways to get great results for your clients so they keep paying you for longer and feel like you're the most valuable person on their team. But if you're constantly looking for new hacks or ways to cheat the algorithm, you might be left frustrated and disappointed. And each month when you have to send your client their report, you might be panicking that this will be the time they say they're letting you go because you're just not delivering what they really want. And let's be honest, they probably want more buyers on their website or more leads they can sell to. If that sounds familiar, you're going to love the brand new four-part online training we're hosting, where we're going to be sharing the three marketing phases you need to turn people into customers for your clients, explaining how you can get more reach on any platform, and a simple tweak that makes content creation easier and data more simple to understand. We'll even be sharing how to squeeze more juice from your content so you can make more money for your clients and for yourself. To get a free invitation to this training, just go to the twolauras.com forward slash pod invite. The link will be in the show notes or send us a message on Instagram with the word invite. You're listening to JFDI with the two Lauras. This is the weekly podcast where the two of us chat about all things related to building a business as a freelancer. We're on a mission to help more social media freelancers to build profitable businesses that fund their lifestyle and work around their families. And every week we share tips, advice and inspiration about business, marketing and social media. And occasionally we have the odd rant too. In this episode, we're diving into one of the most underrated changes that social media managers can make to increase their income. And we're sharing why you should consider becoming an ads manager this year if you want to make a significant increase to your income. Okay, so I think for those of you who don't know, it's worth just saying that Laura and I are both freelance ads managers and social media managers. So we're, we know what we're talking about here. Yeah, we, we mostly focus on meta ads. I think it's important to say that. Yeah. So Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, definitely. So that's been our bread and butter, I guess, for several years now. I still manage ads for clients. So we feel like we're in a good good place to discuss this. <laughs> um, yeah. And for me, personally, before we kind of get into it, like I offered organic social media to start with. And I... And I still do. And I still enjoy it, obviously. But I wanted more, I think it would probably be fair to say. Mm. Like I was coming, I'm just becoming a bit bored of it. And the biggest thing I found really difficult and a bit draining, I guess, is that constant kind of difficulty in proving your ROI. And yes, there are ways in which we can do that. But it was, I felt like I was constantly up against that question. Like, and it was a bit relentless. Whereas the beauty about ads is that you can kind of prove the ROI quite easily, significantly. The data is there and the data never lies. Well, maybe slightly on meta, but you know what I mean? It's, um, <laughs> so it, everything just became easier. And, and also, I think a lot of my clients were ready for ads at the time. And I thought if I didn't do it, than somebody else would and I don't like that feeling so it really motivated me to really up my game like I've always managed ads I've managed ads for my previous business it's something that I'd tinkered away at for years and I you know it's well over 11 years of ads now that I've been running and it's changed considerably but the biggest change for me was what I was able to charge and the income I was able to make and not having to be a slave to the scheduler all the time was just like a breath of fresh air for me. Yeah, and I think when we both started doing ads, there was far fewer businesses who have taken advantage of ads back then than there are now. So when we were, you know, speaking to clients, it was probably a much harder sell because they didn't really understand like the benefit to them. Whereas now, like everyone knows about Facebook ads, Instagram ads, don't they? They know that they're a thing. They know that you know what they can do for their business. So. I think these days there's probably even more demand for good ads managers, even though there's more ads managers, there's more demand for good ones than there was back in the day when we were, you know, working with clients at the beginning. Yeah. And I think it's fair to say, like, we've got our Ads Manager Academy. It's been around now for four years, three and a half years, four years. Since 2019. Yeah, four but nearly five years. Four and a, anyway, it's been around since 2019. Um, and it's so when we've trained hundreds and hundreds now of social media managers to become ads managers. 
And it's incredible to see the difference it's had on them and their careers. And some of them are absolutely like nailing it, aren't they? Yeah. And I think this is this is why we started off this episode saying that this is how you can increase your income significantly. Like this isn't a small increase when you become an ads manager. This can be an absolute massive difference to your life, your business. So if I think about uh, CJ, who is one of our Inner Hub members, and she's been through Ads Manager Academy, probably like right, probably one of the first yeah. cohorts that we did when we delivered this course. How her business looks now, because she focuses on ads, is so different. She told us recently that she now earns six times what she was earning when she was managing just organic socials. And because of that massive change in her income, she's been able to have her dream wedding recently. She's renovated her house, all of which she's been sharing on her stories, and it looks amazing. She is just planning a two-month trip where she's going to travel around Asia, New Zealand, Australia. And she can do that because she does ads, because she knows what she's doing. She can get returns. She can charge the big bucks. And when you're just doing organic, I don't think you can charge anywhere near as much as you can when you're doing ads. And just her story alone, I think, is a reason to take this seriously. But I know that you've got somebody as well who sent you a DM recently. Yeah, so another one of our members who did the Ads Manager Academy, again, probably one of the first ones. So they're both, you know, a good few years down the line now in terms of their careers. But she went from initially, uh, she was billing £600 a month um, when she kind of first came into our world. Then within a year, she'd scaled that up to five grand. Then within two years, she's scaled that up to 10k a month. And she is now billing £22,000 a month, which is insane. Can I, hang on, hang on. Can we just have a minute for that? Because before I went freelance, I wasn't even making £22,000 a year. I know, it's incredible. So that is amazing. Yeah, she's done so, so well. And, And I think what, to me, like I am not, I'm not that money orientated but I am. Uh, what, have you met yourself? <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, I am. That's what gets me out of bed in the morning. It's why I have two businesses. But I think it's for, for the end goal, isn't it? The, the the why is what is the big thing, isn't it? And so she went on to say how she's been able to semi-retire her husband and the wow. impact that has had on her family and home life is incredible. And, you know, and, and she goes on and on and it's, you know, it's a really lovely message. But you know, there's there's some people like I don't want to make twenty two grand a month. Um, like when I was at the peak of my freelance, and I was probably making ten ish a month. That was too much. It was too much for me. I found it too stressful. I've got a very busy home life. She couldn't go out and spend it all. <laughs> it was just all in their bank. No, and that no, I d- you. no, I don't want that to sound like a, sound un- ungrateful. <laughs> it was just a really stressful year, and I didn't. I wasn't. I was falling out of love of it, and I just decided to kind of scale it all back. And and it was around the time that we met as well. So obviously this business started to grow. So, you know, it, it kind of worked out okay to do that. But, you know, some people are all here and wanting to build a team and wanting to, you know, increase their kind of billable hours and other people don't. And I just, I, I just thought this was the opportunity to say, the reason to become an ads manager isn't just to make loads of hundreds of thousands of pounds a year it's not about that you have got to enjoy it and because it, it's not that easy and as I said that it's taken them a few years to get to that point you know so I just want to be realistic I think and I don't want equally I don't want people to think well I don't I don't want to make that kind of money I you know I'm happy with the kind of money I'm making now or just would like a little bit more and that's okay yeah that was all I just didn't want people to feel like oh god 22 grand bloody hell it's also just as good to be an ads manager making a couple of grand a month, I think. I'm waffling. One of the pushbacks we get, oh, well not pushback, but where we have conversations with people and they're like, oh, you know, I don't know. Do I want to do it? Don't I want to do it? Is they say, well, it's normally they say, I just don't like data. Like a lot of social media marketers are quite creative people, aren't they? They're, you know, and they therefore mm. feel like, and especially maybe if they've been in in like ads manager and they can just see rows and rows and rows and rows of numbers, they can go, that's not for me. I'm not a numbers person. But I thought it was really interesting. It would be really interesting for people to kind of hear both of our take on it. Because as you know, because we've talked about this in previous podcasts, I, so Laura Davis, I don't really like the creative side. I hate Canva. It literally puts 
my blood pressure goes up just at the thought of it. And I, but I love numbers. Numbers is my thing. So I am an ads manager now, but I make sure that the clients that I work with provide me with the creative. I don't have to go and sit in Canva and make pretty things because, well, let's, it wouldn't work. (laughs) Whereas you're the opposite, aren't you? Yeah. I am, yeah. I like the creative side. I like the copywriting. Like, that's where my strengths lie. But I hate data. So when I'm managing ads, I am, for a start, I don't work with clients who have massive budgets because the bigger the budget, the more data there is to analyze. So I don't do that. I work with clients who've got like the smaller budgets because there's less data for me to worry about. And I'm very specific about what data I look at. So I don't get overwhelmed. It's so easy to get overwhelmed with data in Ads Manager. And yes, I know what all of that data means and I know exactly how it can help me. But I will always focus on the most important metrics when I'm looking at ads and, you know, testing and all of that stuff. And I will not ignore, but pay less attention to the other things that are going to overwhelm me and put me off of all of that data. So I think, and and if you love all of that stuff, amazing. But most people are either data people or they're like creative kind of people. And I think it's important to say that whichever kind of bucket you fall into, you can be an amazing ads manager, whether you like data or not, whether you're creative or not. And yes, so my clients very rarely would give me creative. And if they did, like it was rubbish. So I would always have to do something with it. Whereas Laura's clients, like you wouldn't take on a client who, if they didn't have creative to give you, if they didn't have, you know, photos or videos or whatever, or I suspect you would make sure that you're charging them so you can outsource that to someone. Yeah. 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 So if it was a a client that I would desperately wanted to work with, which rarely happens, um, I would, and uh, but I needed to produce the creative. I would find someone if they didn't have someone, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. So there's ways around it, isn't there? Yeah, and that's exactly my point. I think people get put off by it for for various reasons, and if you learn well and you follow a good training, you start to realise what the important parts are and the, and the kind of bullshit you can kind of ignore. Mm. You know, you don't have to understand every single metric within Ads Manager. You only need to understand the ones that are relevant to your clients and block out the rest of it. And, you know, so there are ways around everything. But I think for both of us, it had a considerable impact on our incomes. And to a degree, it made my life a lot easier, my work life a lot easier because I le- had to have less mm. social media management clients. And in fact, I only then took on social media management clients who also wanted the ads. And then I actually, in the end, started to outsource those bits of the social media, um, the organic social media. And I just did the ads for those clients. And that's kind of still how things go now. I'm very similar to you. And like the the things that it kind of changed for me, I remember my mum, so my mum lives in America and I haven't been since before COVID, but we used to go to America all the time to go and stay with my mum. But it was tricky because yes, I was freelance and I could really, realistically, I could work from anywhere. But with a massive time difference and my clients being in the UK, organic social media management was difficult when I was away. So when I focused and most of my clients were ads, one year I went to America to stay with her for five weeks, didn't impact my work at all. A few weeks later, we were like, oh, let's just go back because we can. So not only could we, because I could afford it because of why I was charging for ads, but also because the work, like it it didn't rely on a time zone. So I was able to, and I spent another five weeks there. And if I was just doing organic social media management, A, I wouldn't have been able to afford it, but B, it just wouldn't have worked with my clients and their audience and all of that stuff. It just wouldn't have worked so well because of the time difference. So I think how you're doing it and, you know, whether you are creative or whether you're not and how, whatever your life looks like managing ads and offering an ads management service, it can change everything for you in terms of your lifestyle, in terms of your income, in terms of like taking away maybe like the boredom or the frustrations of being stuck in a schedule every day, you know, and it can have a a massive difference to you. But I also know that when you don't know what you're doing and you very first open ads manager, it is scary as hell. Like you're looking there and like, what the hell is any of this stuff? Because it doesn't look like what anything that we're used to seeing in any of the other platforms, right? Mm. It's like, it's just so different. There's all these columns of different numbers and all these words that you don't understand. And like, like video through plays where actually they're only talking about somebody watching 15 minutes video. None of it makes sense (laughs) unless you've been taught it. And so it's very, I think you can probably teach yourself to some extent organic social media, 
but I don't feel like you can necessarily do it all on your own when it comes to ads, unless you're willing to spend a lot of your own money because you can press buttons organically and learn how things work. You have to spend money to press buttons in ads manager to learn how things work. So I think you need to learn from what other people have done and they can teach you like, this is what this means. And this is what happens when you press this and all of that stuff. You can't kind of go into it blind, can you? And and do it yourself. No. And I think you kind of have to approach it knowing that it's lifelong learning really, because Mm. like with anything in social media, it changes. And that's the same for paid, you know, meta paid advertising as well as organic, you know, so things do change. So you do have to keep on your toes you know, like I haven't had a client for e-com for a fair few months now. And I know, I know I'll have to go and reteach myself bits and bobs because I know so much has changed. And that's fine, like for me, because that's not my niche and that's not what I do. So the chances are I probably won't ever do lots of e-com if, if at all e-com work again. So it is about having a, a little bit of focus because if you do try to be like an e-com expert, a lead generation expert, it's all very, very different but also all kind of the same. <laughs> yeah, it's um, weird, isn't it? It is different, but the same. Yeah, and but, but without a doubt, you have to go into it knowing that this is you're never going to know everything. Like no one ever knows anything about social media, and you find me someone who actually knows about everything in social media. Honestly, they don't. They, that person doesn't exist. And it's the yeah. same with ads. You, so you just have to be prepared to surround yourself by other ads people, by learning from others, by paying attention to what's happening. You know, the, the bulk of what happens in Facebook, um, sorry, meta ads is about testing, you know, so you can't just kind of totally listen to what other people are doing. Yeah, oh, okay, I'll do that. Mm. And that's going to work for me. Unfortunately, it doesn't, it's not as easy as that, but you can totally listen to people to inspire you. Yeah, it's much like with organic. Like if somebody says to you, you have to use 15 hashtags, well, you, you're going to go and test and see if that works. And like you'll see people saying you can't get leads for under five pounds on Instagram anymore or on Facebook anymore. Well, I can tell you for a fact you can because we do. Yeah. But we do that. We know because it's, we've tested and different things work differently for different accounts. So it's very much like with organic. Some advice that's out there you need to take with a pinch of salt and there's a lot of testing and things will work differently for different clients and different ad accounts. But it, that's where the fun is, right? There's so much fun in ads because you're like, okay, well, I can see that this is working because the data is telling me. So what can I do to make it work even yeah. better? Because it's a, it's like when you're doing organic, you've got a post that's working. You then have to start fresh with a new post. And with ads, you don't. You like, you can just tweak one tiny little thing and make it better. Like maybe it's just something simple, like and then changing. Sit on your hands for a bit. Yeah, changing like the headline or changing the color of a, a graphic can make a significant difference and you can't test that easily in organic social it's like there's a really long-winded process right so if you like quick wins ads can sometimes give you that kind of quick win and in and 100 percent on that point that they're probably one of the only skills you do need to have as a ads manager is patience yeah there's a lot of waiting around there's a lot of kind of um because things take time to kind of prove it so Making a tweak to an ad, you want to sit on that then for at least kind of a week. It depends how much you're spending, but you need to sit on it for a while and see what impact it has. And and that can be quite difficult. You know, like I've got, I've just literally done some new creatives with my client and last week they were like, nothing was happening. And I was like, oh God, I was thinking, and at first of all, I was thinking there must be something wrong with the website, you know. Oh yeah, it must be that. Not me. (laughs) Yeah. And so I'm like sending them loads of like test leads saying, are these actually working? And they're like, uh yeah I was like damn it and then literally it was like I think day 10 and I was about to kind of go in and just kind of strip it all back and try to think you know test something out and I started to get leads and now it's doing really really well so it is hard and I think you know people chat about this all the time about that patience you need to have and there is a lot of you've got to be quite good at people management (laughs) in terms of your clients or client management and like setting boundaries. I think sometimes people think Facebook ads are going to be the, I keep saying Facebook ads, you should say how, I see how old I am, meta ads, um, because people think it's going to fix a problem. But really the biggest lesson is if you're not selling organically by chucking a load of money at it, that's not going to fix the problem. So being prepared to have open and honest conversations with clients and say, you know, look, no one's ever going to buy anything. Your website is shit. 
I recommend you do all of this, then come back to me in six months time and having the confidence to kind of say that. And that kind of comes with time and it comes with experience. And the more clients you work with, the more you realize, shit, I shouldn't have taken them on this client. You know, this product is crap or, you know, their website's rubbish. You do learn as you kind of go on that side of things, but you are going to have to be someone who can manage expectations without a doubt because nothing happens overnight. And I would always say to allow a good few months really to start seeing what results you can get and your kind of cost per acquisitions and those kind of things. And yes, you might be able to get a sense earlier than that if it's a good campaign or not a good campaign, but I think a three months sets that expectations for their clients. And and if they come back and say, well, I can't afford just to chuck three months at ads and not know if it's going to work. And it's like, well, uh, there's your red flag, you yeah. know, that they're not ready. And so it's, it is a steep learning curve, but you do have to be someone who's prepared to be quite confident and and have those honest conversations because at the end of the day you're doing them a disservice if you don't and you just let them keep spending money on something that is never going to create a return really definitely what I will say though about learning ads is that quite often people will tell you oh there's so much to learn there's a real dark art you know and and they'll make them sound like this mystical thing that only certain people can learn and that is not the case at all like literally no. anyone could learn to manage ads. They are not a dark art. Yeah. It's a case of knowing this thing goes here, this thing goes here. You need to think about this. You need to press this button for that. And once you know those things, it's just about testing to try and make what you're doing work better. There is no dark art to that. There is no secret button. The fact of the matter is that Meta wants people to use ads because that's how they make their money. So if they made it really, really difficult and really like, you know, secret, people wouldn't spend money on ads. They would go and spend their money somewhere else. So they need to make sure that people can use it. They need to make sure that people can get results so that they continue to spend money on the platforms. So once you've learned what you need to learn, and if you're joining Ads Manager Academy, you'll you'll learn literally everything right from the basics, right to the very advanced stuff. Once you know that, it's just a case of putting that into action very much like it is on organic. Like there are no secret things that the platforms are hiding from you. You just need to know exactly what it is you need to do. And it sounds far, far more scary than it actually is. If Laura and Mm. I can do it, I think anyone can do it. (laughs) 100%. I think one of the good things about being an ads manager is, and this goes back to what you just said about sitting on your hands and being patient. I feel like and I, this might just be me, but I feel like when I was managing ads compared to when I was doing social, I had much more free time. You know, you, yeah. it seems to just fit around your lifestyle better being an ads yeah. manager. A hundred percent. And I think, you know, on the whole, like it used to be smooth sailing. It, there was never this kind of shit, the schedule is empty. Mm, yeah, or broken. <laughs> I've got, yeah, yeah. There was no, never any late, well, no, that's a light. The late night working was rare. Mm. And as long as, yes, you do have to go in ads manager every day, sometimes just to check everything is okay and take a note of your stats, check that there's nothing major going peak tong. But sometimes that can literally be like 10 minutes, if that. Yeah. And yes, every kind of, every week I would, each client would have dedicated time for me to do anything I needed to do, whether it be new creative or to test a different audience. There There was always dedicated time. Yeah. But there was so much more flexibility with that in terms, as you say, working around my life. Now, Mm. I'm not going to sit here with rose tinted glasses on because there are times when things go a bit peaked on and suddenly you need to redo a whole campaign. But on the whole, that's rare. And the best thing without a doubt is the flexibility it it gives you. And like you've said, you know, the fact that you were able to go off to America and spend time with your mom. And it's like CJ's. I know she's planning on working when she's on her trip. You know, so it's, it does offer you that flexibility that I don't think many other freelance jobs do. I don't think, you know, you don't have to be in the country that your client's in and you can move around and you, you don't necessarily have the late night working. You're not a slave to the scheduler. And it really made such a difference, I think, to me and my kind of work-life balance. And add into all of that, you get more flexibility, but you're also being paid more. People will pay you more as an ads manager than they will an organic social media marketer. Whether that's right or wrong, that's a whole nother probably podcast episode because, you know, organic social media marketers work their absolute asses off. So 
I don't necessarily know whether that's right or wrong, but you can charge more mainly because you can prove your return quite easily with meta ads. Definitely. And so so there's one thing that Laura and I feel really passionate about when it comes to ads, and that is that we feel like every single social media manager should have the opportunity to learn how to manage ads for Facebook and Instagram because they are the main two platforms. And that's one of the reasons that we brought our Ads Manager Academy program into the social media managers toolkit so that we could have allow more people to have access to it. So if you are already somebody who's using our toolkit, go and dive in. You can learn straight away. If you're not, we'll make sure that the link for that is in the show notes. Um, It's the twolawyers.com forward slash toolkit. And the Ads Manager Academy is a self-study program. We've recently updated it. So literally everything in there is up to date. We take you through everything that you need to know right from the very beginning of getting to grips with how to navigate ads manager, how to build audiences, how to set up ads, how to create your first campaign and turn it on live, all of that stuff. We talk about the data, what all of that means, how you can make informed decisions about the next steps. We talk to you about how you can position yourself as an ads manager so that people actually want to hire you and what it's like to work with clients. Everything, literally everything, right from the very basics, right to up to the like the the funnels and all of the more kind of strategic, advanced sort of thing. All of that is in Ads Manager Academy and all of Ads Manager Academy is now available in the Social Media Managers Toolkit. So as I said, the link for that will be in the show notes. If you've got questions though about whether ads management is right for you, you know, what it's really like, whether you should do this program, all of those sorts of things, come and chat to us. We're an open book. We'll be really, really honest. And if we don't think you should be an ads manager, we'll tell you. So come and ask us. We are always hanging out on Instagram at the two Lauras. We're in our Facebook group all the time, the Social Media Managers Hub. We'll make sure both of those links are in the show notes as well. And just come and talk to us about it. Like, you know, we are here for you to pick our brains and ask us what it's like. We've both been doing ads for a long, long time. We've helped lots and lots of people to do it. So if we don't know the answer, well, I'll be very, very surprised. And if you're an Inner Hub member, remember you have the Facebook Ads Manager chat dedicated area that you can go and kind of ask all your questions and we all try to help each other out so that's there for you if you're an inner hub member so don't forget about that yeah so hopefully we've convinced you that you know learning how to manage ads is a good thing to do this year and uh yeah we'll make sure all of those links are in the show notes and that's it i think we'll be back yeah same time same place next week and hopefully we'll chat with you in the meantime see you soon speak to you soon au revoir Toodles.